there is a tendency to, you know, quite natural to the human mind to fix things in time and space. And uh, it has its advantages because it puts things in a certain context which we can handle. But all things in time and space uh, that endure the rub and change of time have their origin in the timeless and the spaceless. So uh, let's begin the story of Orwell from there. I, I prefer it that way. So last time we spoke about the divine sacrifice, uh, the divine holocaust, the divine sacrifice in matter as mother puts it at one place. In fact, uh, she speaks of an apocalyptic vision and she says that that portion of humanity which has simply this faith of the divine sacrifice in matter, they may understand nothing about it, but they are automatically lifted up by the new consciousness. Just by the link of faith they get connected. So we spoke about this divine sacrifice in matter, but precisely because the divine is one and whole, all creation is essentially one. It's a unity. So along with each particle having its own destiny and growing towards its own fulfillment, there is equally a collective destiny that pursues this conglomerate and um, that's what we see all the time happening in creation right from the very beginning. So Auroville, if we really go far back in time, this attempt to create a unity at maybe a human level it becomes conscious but the attempt to create a unity exists in creation. But the attempt to create a unity at the human level starts way back almost as I said earlier uh, with the very first avatar and I am reminded of the story of Noah's Ark where uh, there is a similar story in Indian thought when all the different creatures are put together in a single boat and carried together, uplifted up mm. into a different plane of consciousness because all the rest will be destroyed. Destroyed only in its uh, form but not of course in its essence. So this story of Noah's Ark or um, you know of King Satyavrat uh, as, as we know it um, is the story again which reminds us of the unity of all creation. Uh, maybe we can, you know, it's too distracting, it's, it's it's too, distracting too bright. Yes. Yeah. So, it's a story of, you know, different elements of creation which come together in a unity. And then subsequently we see several attempts. Um, some of them half conscious, some of them conscious. But there is a tendency in human race to come together and form groups. And the mother herself speaks of it way back when she was in Egypt about uh, uh, the Sun Temple and the edicts of the Sun Temple which basically are very similar to Charter of Auroville. And she was asked that, um, you know, it sounds very similar to Auroville. So um, uh, is it true? It was some kind of a presage or a precursor? She says yes. So then she was asked, so um, uh, why was it given? Because Auroville never realized itself at that point of time, anything like Auroville. And then she says to preserve the idea in the mind of the race. So the seed has been sown way, way back. In fact, with creation, the seed of Auroville has been sown. But mankind has to become ready. There is still very barbaric instincts. And these instincts come in the way of, uh, you know, um, quarreling and all these things. And we know how when Auroville started, these instincts came up. And when people would quarrel, the mother would say that the spirit of Auroville is not yet formed. Because spirit means the spirit of unity. Even the story in Bible, the story of the Tower of Babel, the mother at one place says Auroville is a Tower of Babel in reverse. And then she says that who knows this story where people started building a tower and began, you know, uh, getting confused because whatever one person said, the other didn't understand. She said, who knows, this was uh, a similar attempt, but it never succeeded because, you know, the, the human differences and egos came and clashed with each other. And that's what the confusion of speech. Sri Aurobindo uh, in Savitri yes. has the line, the vo a babel of the voices of the world. Yes. The world. World. 
and in fact uh, that also reminds me that uh, you know there is a whole description at least of Matri Mandir as well as Auroville in Savitri itself the whole house of the spirit and the new creation yes. then in uh, Sikh religion there has been a concept of a city where there is no sorrow Begampura and uh, Shelley has dreamed of such things you know a city of gold a city of delight so this um, this truth about uh, a place where human beings can live with a spirit of unity uh, has been there so when people say that Auroville was conceived in 1965 we are probably limiting it too much to space and time but only thing we can say is that the mother openly declared at least in the documents recorded documents to Satprem when she starts asking him um, have you heard of Auroville and then she reveals but then what she reveals is something amazing she says that this idea of Auroville came to her as a child but she didn't obviously use the word Auroville and she says she had created a whole formation it's a very interesting story that there was a whole formation in the occult world she had created but when she came to India she left it in Paris what about the creation when she came to Sri Aurobindo and said I have the word yes and he made her he asked her to to dissolve it yes yes that was of course the overmind creation yes, it yes. was not yet the uh, word of the new creation right so he didn't want that because with that she could create uh, recreate the same world with the same combinations but in a much better way so that's a very interesting uh, you know issue that you have just touched upon that we often feel as human beings that well there is nothing basically wrong in the world but things are not in place and uh, there is a disorder and if only human beings and everybody else could be just noble and wonderful the world would be a much better place in other words we have the same elements but we are reshuffling them and when we reshuffle them we can create a much better you know yeah. world uh, what in India is uh, known as the Sattvic society and such efforts have also been there yeah, you know the theosophical the whole, society yeah right. theosophical society we had you know in ancient time the whole idea of Ram Rajya the same elements are there nothing new has been added but we have a much more organized and a beautiful humanity but Shurabindo did not want that so he wanted a new element now the beauty is this new element changes everything yeah. and I am reminded you know of, of this new consciousness how it changes I have a very simple example of it uh, you know like we spoke about the divine sacrifice so divine sacrifices himself interestingly without losing all of himself so the example is of a you know person who is uh, a PhD maybe a Nobel laureate so when he has to teach his child ABCD in kindergarten level so for him it's a big 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 come down many 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 stairs and he does it out of love and he does it so that the child can ascend and reach that point and even surpass him so you know this is a similar thing like a divine sacrifice and this birth of new consciousness which changes everything we see in everyday life when a child comes in home now when a child comes suddenly not only everything changes but new possibilities emerge from parents which were not there you know parents when they are husband and wife they are fighting with each other they are quarreling very common scenario <laughs> you know exceptions apart and suddenly the child comes and they learn patience they learn selfless love they learn unconditional giving and all the things which were there inside but the coming of the child the child does nothing he simply is he is in delight but he brings it out but he brings it out so I, I look at new consciousness very often like that that's very presence begins to remold us because it puts a silent occult pressure from within for us to change so you know this thought reminded me about you know the word of the new creation yeah. which at that point of time there was a possibility of taking this creation to its acme because it has not yet realized that peak possibility yeah. but the problem with that was that it would still have been subject to something or the other like a kind of you know uh, they, there was a possibility on the fringe of falsehood error coming in and destroying it. Sri Aurobindo says you'll become famous. Yeah, you'll become world worshipped. religion. You will fame. <laughs> you will create. Yeah. So I think the highest possibilities of the old creation, uh, the seer and the sage and the yogin, 
Shurabindu saw as the seed and a possibility of something yet greater. And the highest possibility of that was a spiritualized society, a cult, a sect, a religion. And we know that it has failed. Let's accept it squarely that it has failed. It, many of them were well intentioned, perhaps most of them, but uh, because unless the human being changes, it doesn't help, it doesn't work out. So the mother, when she came to India, maybe around 1927, I, I mean, this date I am saying simply because in 67 or 68, maybe I am slightly mistaken, she says 30 or 40 years back, I spoke about it to Sri so that means Auroville was conceived way back. <laughs> Very soon we'll have a centenary of the original conception. So she spoke about it to Sri and Sri told her something very interesting that yes, it is the one chance for humanity. Right then and there, he foresaw it. But then at that point she had made, since Sri okayed it, she had a plan of Auroville in a certain way on a hill and a river and she says on top of the hill there will be um, a, a, a room for Sri yes, Aurobindo. And then on the slopes there will be four petals and then twelve petals. And then there will be a township and then there will be a wall and there would be gates. And you know when the visitors come, one thing she wanted that they will leave their money bags outside. I think many would have turned away. <laughs> and they would be given ticket for everything and when they come back they can pick up the money <laughs> so money not only is not the lord it's just out she wanted to keep money out of our will <laughs> and of course she wanted to keep politics also out of uh, our will and uh, there's something very interesting and humorous about it but nevertheless she had this plan and this plan was almost on the verge of fruition because in hyderabad sir Agwar hadri had given found the place it is a hill I am forgetting what it what is there now, but the, it, this land is uh, you know is with uh, sh uh, you know probably Anand Reddy would be better able to say about that land, okay. but it is there, and that that hill and the river the stream passing by everything was there and Mother had approved of it, but what happened was that they said because that time Hyderabad was very strongly it didn't want to merge with India. You know the whole story with Sardar Patel and all this. Mm -hmm. But he didn't want to merge with India. So he said the only problem is they want that the goods should remain there and not go out. So the mother didn't accept it. She said, no, um, that's not acceptable. Auroville can't be a closed something. And there we see Auroville as an extension of the idea of ashram, where ashram is primarily where people come for individual sadhana. Ashram in the earlier days was very, very, everybody was as if in a cocoon. And she would say that I would wrap my cocoon and everybody would be doing individual sadhana. But 58, for the first time, she declares that now that is gone. And ashram is not confined to the geographical boundaries, but wherever there are those who have declared themselves as disciples of Sri and turned to his teaching, becomes an ashram house. So ashram became a very different kind of collectivity for the first time. And that's the time when people felt that there is a degeneration in the ashram atmosphere and mother had to tell them, no, overall there is an uplift, but individually, yes, because now everybody has to share the uh, treasures with everybody. So it's not no more like, you know, your own progress, your own individual growth. So that that's just a little bit of historical aspect of the collective sadhana. But then because Sri had to withdraw from the physical, so she says that plan went away. Then the plans once again comes back in a very interesting conversation. When Huta tells mother, mother, you know, I want to make a, uh, you know, she was talking about lake and she's, see how much futuristic mother has been. And we get stuck in a, you know, uh, warped moment of time. The mother at that point of time, so this conversation must have been either in 60, early 60, yeah. Uh, perhaps, uh, no, this 65 I know, but with Huta. I think so early 60. Early 60, because Huta has finally come around 58 or something, where she sees that in the lake she wanted to make a film studio. And she had even given a name for that film studio. And she had given a message at the service of beauty and truth. 
maybe truth and beauty. So all these plans were there and from that Huta came out that mother, uh, I would make a house. I want that there should be a house for you. And that's how it started. And I would be also there. So, you know, mother speaks of that. And uh, when she talked to Huta about this plan that she had about, you know, that hillock and Shurbindo's room. So uh, she shared with her, she says, all those memories of Oro that forming an ideal collectivity came back. But I did not use the word Auroville. She did not use that word Auroville with Huta. But she spoke of an ideal collectivity or like a township near the lake where she would be having a place and Huta would be as a keeper. And she said yes. that I would keep the only allow the servants of truth to come in and <laughs> nobody else. Yes. So mother has a laugh. A laugh. <laughs> so then it went away. Then the, the thought came again when, um, of course, the famous Raymond, he, uh, he wrote to her that, well, I have, I'm just coming from, you know, he had built something and as we know he was not just an architect, but something much more. Yes. Uh, and he said that, you know, um, did Golconde. Yes, did Golconde. And he said, I would uh, very much, uh, you know, I, I dream of wanting to make a city or something like that. And the mother says, uh, well, I have a city if you are ready. And then she says that he went to Paris and that formation which mother had left there as a child, that formation took hold of him. And he says that within a year, he says, that I am as if possessed and everything is coming to me because it was mother's own. <laughs> creation. So now we see how childhood dreams of the mother and what are these dreams? Dreams of the divine. What mother has brought with her on earth, even her dreams are dreams of the Lord which she has come to manifest. So now the time came and then there was the spot and of course there is a whole legend about Auroville which I keep recounting and I, I love this legend because uh, maybe in, in India we love legends. So <laughs> there has to be legion with every place. So I love the Irumbai legend, you know, connected with Auroville. You must have heard about it. So it's the legend of a famous, uh, well-known sage in that area. Uh, and naturally the sages and seers go beyond the normal frames of our social convention. And that's why they are much mi misunderstood and they had to go away from the all of society so that they can exercise as Shubhendra says their dangerous freedom outside. So uh, this man once uh, this sage was sitting and uh, the, the local ruler there was a courtesan dancing in the court and suddenly her uh, you know uh, what is this called anklet anklet fell off. And this man, like a little child, because you know he, he's a sage, he doesn't have all those frames. He got up, went there, picked up the anklet and tied it back to the courtesan. And everybody started laughing. Oh, he calls himself a sage. And then his other part came out from the beneficent Shiva to the Rudra. And he cursed, it seems, that you have not understood and known what true sagehood is. And therefore this land is cursed and it will become barren. And it became barren. Now you see how things connect together. So when these people went and said, well, uh, you know, it seems your curse is really having its effect. Uh, and this is very interesting because in India, every curse from somebody who is truthful, not, not uh, people who are in falsehood, uh, opens the door towards something greater in the future. So they came and asked him that what is the solution? He says solution will not be now, but after many hundreds of years, when people from all over the world will come and till the soil, then this land will become fertile again. And I'm sure you must have known what Auroville land was and what it is. It was a desert. Yes. There were a few palm trees scattered here and there. And we could see from the highest point at Machuman near the sea. And looking in the other direction, we could see the hills. You can imagine. Mm -hmm. And no. so it. you see how many things have gone into the shaping of Auroville. The seed has been in the first stir of creation itself. Yes. And then 
when the Auroville began to come up, money came, she made some very, very interesting observations. The mother was very, very keen and this comes several times. She wanted America and Russia to unite yes. and India to act as a catalyst. Yes. This she has mentioned categorically and uh, she says it's good for the good of the world. And she was very happy to see that in Auroville, on one side, the then communist bloc, she refers to Russia, <coughs> not China. And on the other side, the country with the most material, you know, prosperity, America, they are coming together, both are taking interest. And she says they do not know, but they will help. That's how they will come together. I'm very keen that they come together because this will help mankind. And then as Auroville grows, uh, we know she didn't want any religion. She didn't want ideologies either. But as soon as people came, one of the first things they started discussing was what kind of political system they will have. <laughs> and there's a very humorous aside to this story. Mother, of course, laughed. She says they still cannot go beyond politics. <laughs> when someone came and wrote a letter to her that, well, I believe democracy is the best system right now. And unless democracy is replaced by something still better, I want just democracy, otherwise I'm quitting. So mother laughed and wrote back, how do you know that something better is not already there? She yes. called it a divine anarchy. Divine anarchy. Divine anarchy. Absolutely. You know the principle is divine anarchy. And Shobindo, in thoughts and aphorism, see how many ways Auroville gets connected. He says that the ideal uh, communism is beautiful because it means that all the resources are shared by all. But the communism that we have seen is a shadow, dark, asuric. And he says the only if communism has to ever come back and survive, it has to be along the lines of Vedanta. And then he speaks about, you know, this divine anarchy that the, that is the beginning and the end of all things. But in the middle, it will lead straight to the devil. <laughs> so, <laughs> But the, the communistic system was closer than democracy. Yes, yes. If it could turn to it, the If it could turn towards the right and the light. Yes. And just see this little thing, yeah. twisted everything. Yeah. If that model, and Mother several places says, <clears throat> she speaks about the equal distribution of resources, material right. things. And one of the things in the charter of Auroville is that Auroville belongs to nobody in particular. It belongs to the humanity as a whole. So, you know, it see, makes uh, it's it's nothing else but the upliftment of the uh, you know communist ideal but she also uplifts the democratic ideal she says everyone is essentially free to choose and progress it's a place of endless education so when people asked her that mother you have to frame rules because people had you know you know all kinds of people received the idea so uh, you know s somebody wanted even to make an lsd club in Auroville. you are aware of that Yes, it's there. And then, you know, they said, Mother, please make some rules. Otherwise, people are going to mess, mess up with everything. So she says, I hate to make rules. She never wanted to make rules. Even for the ashram, she says, I do not like the word rules. Yes. But still, because she had to mention something, she made the rules in a very interesting way. That you have to make a choice. And obviously, if you make a choice for this, Auroville is not the place for you. If you believe in the old ways and the old systems and the old methods of organization, then Auroville has no rezo de etre for you. So she made the rules in such a way that she passed it on to the individual that you are making a choice. It's not that you know you have to compulsorily follow a rule, but make a choice. If you make this choice, Auroville is for you. If you don't make that choice, the world is there for all kinds of things. So <laughs> but at, at that time, of course, Orville was so open. Yes. And so it became a, a place where people could come and have drugs. Yeah, yes, yes. And all kinds of things. And Mother had to make one rule. Mm -hmm. No drugs. No drugs. Only rule she made, yes. fixed rule. Yes. No drugs in Orville. And there also, of course, there is a background to how the whole drug culture came up. You know, suddenly because people wanted to break free from the frame. And uh, because they were, they felt the whole rationalistic organization of society uh, was very limiting and restricting because the deeper emotions of the heart were suppressed 
and you know they they wanted to escape from this frame but they didn't understand what really freedom is about and fell straight into the trap of the lower vital yeah. which reason had uh, but mother know, said even then it lifted some even people. then it lifted she looked upon it in a essentially positive way and you remember when the first hippies came and park guest house was meant to cater because it was a little distance and they had their own way of uh, you know living and not taking bath and all those things and uh, how the mother would laugh and yet she accepted even the the notes of this um, band beatles she said some of the notes are coming from uh, you know something very high but some of the notes and then she even said that she used the term barbarians of the new world they have grasped something correct but in their application they are still um, you know carried on by the old consciousness and they are turning it and that's a evolutionary process i suppose every evolution starts with uh, a state where the new is suppressed by the old and it grows the new grows then struggles with the old and eventually overpowers the old has to break open break open that's how the story of you know krishna where birth of a new consciousness in the old suppressed and then you know taking over that's how it it takes place i sent mother and i won't go into the long story mm-hmm. 50, you know, 50 yeah. records wow of i wrote her a letter and she wrote me back <clears throat> this beautiful long letter letter and i asked her what music what composers have you heard before you left for india and what ones didn't you hear and i listed all of them wow and she wrote back she underlined she said all of these i have not heard and i would be so happy to hear just them. imagine and i sent her a box of 50 records and she listened to one every day wow. and i sent her the doors oh and she made a comment about <laughs> rock and roll and she said they are standing on a threshold but they don't know yet how to cross over yes. how beautiful so you know that's what is very heartening and uh, at another level it it makes you also at times sad that people don't understand how wide vision and progressive the mother was i mean to imagine a cinema in an ashram in those days is inconceivable yeah. and what movies movies like the blue lagoon yeah. and people went and told her that mother it's not a good movie and mother says why i saw it what's wrong with it <laughs> <laughs> so you know her vision which breaks free from all possible limited frames and yet she had to create few frames because human beings are not ready for the freedom much like you know moses on mount sinai had to come back with those ten commandments because you know human beings are not free and here she had the vision of the whole it was not just a partial vision of a truth then something very interesting also mother mentions and she says well the formation of auroville came it was like a force it's acting and it's coming up but the reason for auroville a divine reason if you may use the word because obviously it's not a human reason she says it came later and you know it's the typical way of acting of the uh, mahashakti that she chose you know in india there is a conception that while the divine in his purusha aspect knows the three times he knows the past present and future but the divine in his shakti aspect chooses to put a veil deliberately and lives in the present a very fascinating concept she can know if she wants but she deliberately veils because for the sake of work and it makes the the whole process very fascinating because they alone are working nobody else so on one side the divine with knowledge of all the three on the other side the divine shakti who seems to be as if she is fully pouring herself in the moment so you know i am reminded of this several times in many comments of the mother one of them is when she talks about auroville she says the force came and she was doing it but i did not know the reason it's amazing you know <laughs> why the mother does not know she has chosen it yeah. that's how it is so uh, and that we see right throughout with the mother's leela right up to the oh, you know nice. she she has to at that point of time she is pouring the fullness of the divine consciousness because that's the original impulse of creation she pours herself the divine sacrifice 
so then she she says i came to know the reason as it were later which i am putting it in words it didn't come in the form of words and the words is that there was she had a vision of catastrophe and you know uh, all kinds of things and particularly she said about the nuclear arsenal which were piling up in the world and she says they give a reason that it will create so much fear of destruction that people will not use it she says just the contrary the very fact that these things are present it will somewhere or the other make some people get into their heads to use it she was foreseeing isis and all these people yes. because you know they are very close to such things because if you have have a possibility it will keep pressing to realize itself and then she saw the possibility of a catastrophe of even a possibility of a you know a devastating war which will demolish the whole civilization and then this came in this form which she put it in thoughts that's why you have created oroville it is the one chance for the world and humanity yeah. and yet she was of course because not every country participated she even said she she made it a yagna because it is a yagna she says every country has a chance and when they participate in the fo uh, formation of oroville they get protected to an extent against this possibility of a devastation yes so it was not just and then she says uh, people think oroville is just an idea or an ideal it is a force in action like everything that the mother has created it's a force in action the presence of oroville the growth of oroville the progress of oroville is bound to have an impact on humanity as large so we see the mother's first experiment is an individual experiment where each individual in the ashram is a prototype or representative of the old consciousness with possibility of the new and every such person who is worked upon makes it easier for others of his type to evolve and in oroville we see now that it's the first grand experiment in terms of collective evolution for the human race and i i guess that's why when we look at the uh, little bit at the goals of oroville and ashram they have come out from the same and they have essentially ultimately the same goal the new creation but the process was slightly different in the ashram one is expected to enter within consecrate completely you know it's it's like it's a complete yagna which you have to participate in whereas with oroville vile the movement is like this widening 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 embracing 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 it's very fascinating the the two uh, complementary movements both are necessary one where you go within go within go within uh, and there is nothing else except the divine and with that you come back with the process of transformation within which will have an impact upon the world you don't have to do anything it's enough for you to be dedicated to this yoga and you will have an impact upon the world with oroville it's different you start from the other end you begin by embracing all things embracing all things and turning it more and more towards the inherent divinity yes. in things and lifting it to its utmost possibility an interesting thing from the flowers yes is that uh, in the early 1970s i would i i went to bangalore and received these magnificent hawaiian hibiscus mm. we used to trade plants and i grew we grew 11 of them and mother when i would take them to the ashram tara would go up and mother would exclaim magnifique mm. superb yes and tara she tara told them, me she yeah. named them uh. beauty of oroville beauty of the new creation and so many other names and then one day she says to tara we need to have a wider name mm. so we'll give this two names beauty of oroville beauty of the new creation mm. so these flowers are the beauty of the new creation also and there's only one other flower she named and this is so important she named the flower miracle right yes yes you yes, know it yes, blue yes, flower wild yes, flower yes it's also air of oroville wow
Oh, wonderful. Air of Oroville is a miracle. Yes, yes. There is definitely a distinct difference in the atmosphere. Yeah. So, one could well say that the spirit of Oroville is very, very much active. Just as in the ashram or within, you know, a certain periphery, you feel a distinct atmosphere. In Oroville also, it's very, very palpable and very, uh, you know, just a little opening and one can feel it. But we know that as she brought all kinds to the ashram and to all, be worked on. Yeah, yeah. Same and with all Oroville. kinds, all kinds of things. But that's the challenge of the divine. And I have this, uh, you know, when people say that, you know, all these difficult nut cases, <laughs> so, <laughs> includes all of us. So, so I have only this to say that uh, where, where else people can go, uh, um, you know, to heal except to the Supreme Healer. So, you know, it again uh, reminds me of, the, of Shiva, whom Mother has said is the Lord of Transformation. That Shiva uh, has in his company, or rather those who give him company, are not just the uh, beautiful, divinely human beings, not just the sage and seers and yogins, but also the Bhutas, the Pishachas, the uh, Rakshasas, the Asuras, all of them are near him. Because where else one will go for transformation? That's why she gave shelter. At one place, in fact, that, uh, you know, that, that's something where she went beyond Auroville. At one place, the mother says that, that um, there is a, um, you know, when somebody wanted to apply to be in the ashram, later on she was sending many persons to Auroville. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. So, you know, uh, because, you know, ashram, of course, became very limited in terms of house and everything. And then she says, I would like to accommodate the whole world in the ashram if I had the means to do so. Yeah. But then she says that since I do not have those means, therefore I have to restrict it to a certain representative sample. Which means, as a logical corollary, that she will end up turning the whole world into an ashram. <laughs> of course, we have to be careful, not in the religious sense, yes. <laughs> that everybody is a follower of Mother and Shivinda, not in that sense, of course. And she knew this danger. Yes. And therefore, she, particularly with Auroville, was very, very particular that wherever there is even a goodwill for unity, very often religion becomes a barrier, particularly coming from the West. And she spoke when UNO had this big problem because the moment it was mentioned in the charter, he has to be a willing servitor of the divine consciousness. Mm -hmm. So this is something to do with religion. And therefore they were closed. So mother says they are still lagging 200 years behind. <laughs> they cannot understand the difference between religion, spirituality, yeah. God and divine because they are still stuck with that. And they, it's understandable, you know, because the West had to go through such... Uh, difficult period with regard to religious movement. Uh, unlike here, because here religion, spirituality, they have always coexisted and you know one leading to the other. But it, that's why it, it's very difficult for the Indian mind to understand the other way around. That why this kind of a you know anti-religious drive in many places. But if we really look behind appearances, after all even there there is a seeking for truth. And she has said at one place the truth of the materialist and the God of the religionist are one. Yeah. It's just that you are approaching from one angle and somebody is approaching from another angle. As long as there is seeking. And then we see post Auroville mother's talks. I mean, she did not use it in context of Auroville. But my God, the yoga has become so wide, 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 wide. She says, uh, when somebody asked her, what is the... Uh, way for the yoga and what one has to do, etc. Mother says two things she gives as a mantra. One is she says, cling to, do not cling, not cling to nothing, do not cling. She says, it doesn't matter, don't hold on to the past in that sense. Do not cling, do not cling to the past, no more bonds, free, free, free. And then she says, the thirst for that something that which alone can quench the need of love, that which alone can fill the vision of truth, the thirst for that. And it says if these two are there, it makes the perfect combination. And if there is this thirst, then even the extra vagances of an American youth are a path. She changed all our 
ideas of paths. We see it, you know, when we look at the start of the ashram and where the yoga, we are talking about the evolution of yoga. There is another beautiful vision where she says that all the great paths, their founders, they came and started showing her what their path is like. And she says, well, uh, I saw each of them, it was like a little window. As you see it from a window, a small little something. And she says, okay, it's, it's all right, it's all right. But she says, it's not something uh, extraordinary. It's there, so many paths. Then she sees that there is a man sitting under a tree, tall tree, and could not be seen. He's sitting in a purple robe. And uh, he tells the mother, come, please try my dish also. So she goes and takes a little bit of it and says, ah, this is delicious. What is your path? And he says, I have no path. Yes. Yes. You know, so how beautifully the mother has created this wide, wide world. Yes. And um, I think Auroville started and her yoga has leaped into the world. And many events happening in the world subsequently. Many times, I believe, world has been on the threshold of a great war, threshold of use of nuclear weapons. Um, Cold War, the, the ghost of the Cold War is not yet over. So it still lingers, the recent G20 summit. But at the same time, the urge of humanity to come together, form groupings, nations are coming together and, and uh, attempting to look within. As I said, you know, in the recent uh, United Nations conference, uh, the Indian Prime Minister said, you know, we need to look inside whether we have really fulfilled the purpose for which the United Nations exist. It reminded me of what Mother said, that they are so many 200 years behind, yes. steeped in falsehood. But yet, hypocrisy and pretension, the mother says at one place, are the first stirrings of and of truth. At least human beings pay lip service. Of course, those who are satisfied with that, it's just too bad. But then this is how it starts. And I feel the spirit of Auroville is now spreading more and more far and wide. Perhaps we could conclude today's talk with the Matrimandir and the center of Oroville. Yes, yes. Yes, because without it, creation doesn't exist. Without it, unity doesn't exist. So this has been one of the nuttiest of questions that what is it around which humanity can gather itself? And once again, we go back to our everyday life that if we can have the sense of a common parentage around the mother and the mother's love, at one place she also spoke of that in context of Auroville, that Sri mentioned that among the great powers, one of them which was yet to incarnate was love. And he said that until there is truth and unity, love cannot fully manifest because otherwise it's a great power and it blow off. And mother spoke of that just before Auroville in the yoga of the world where she, you know, that big pulsation of love. So in Auroville also, because it's only around that consciousness that humanity can unite. And obviously that consciousness is a principle that exists in creation. That's how the mother put it. Because people have a tendency to deify the body and forget the spirit. So they make a church for Christ they make a temple for Krishna and forget that consciousness mm -hmm. which Christ mm -hmm. and Krishna, you know, represent. Yes. So in Auroville, she wanted a center where, uh, where this principle, the principle of the mother, that's how she uses yes. the word, yes. the true mother, the principle of the mother could manifest and express mm -hmm. itself. And that's why she created Matri Mandir, which would serve as the place to put lines in Savitri, it was this fiery point that called her now. Yeah. Her coming, they had asked for earth and men. This was the fiery point that called her now. And we see that in uh, book three. 
Canto 1, where Shobindo actually describes, uh, not Canto 1, uh, Canto 3, where he actually ends up describing the Matri Mandir. The sanctuary. The sanctuary. Do you remember the lines? Yes, a uh, little bit, little bit. Yeah, I have uh, a few too. <laughs> but not. Hust, soundless. Mm. Oratory. Oratory, that's right. Uh, leg consecrated on an argent floor. So he yes. speaks about the floor which is all white and pure. Yes. A single, uh, you know, untrembling ray, ray. Uh, uh, that lights up. So Descends uh, from above. Yes, uh, yeah. descends from above. And, and a, a something silent voice in, moves in prayer. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. and, and on that floor, yeah. all that is there is, you know, um, kneels down in prayer. It's a wordless prayer. Yes. So it's a very beautiful line, actually. These lines, uh, ten lines, uh, are basically it's the... It's a description of the Matri Mandir. Description chain. of the Matri Mandir itself. Yeah. There lay a consecrated argent floor. Maybe next time, when we, we read about Auroville, we should start with... Let's do uh, that. Yes, these lines from Savitri, where on one side, what really is the spirit of unity in a new creation, none lived for himself, but all lived for all, so many, you know, and how each one is still unique. Their unity was not limited to monotone. So there are many fold expressions and yet everybody is united. But united around what? United around the Divine Mother. And we also have those lines in Savitri where she says, um, at the radiant summits where all are one, the children of eternity, fire, wedded fire, and they come together and they reach that radiant summit where all are one. So uh, the Matri Mandir is a manifestation of that um, um, consciousness of oneness and multiplicity together, which the mother holds within herself. And through her supramental energies, she sends it out to the world. And she said that it was not a place for music or nothing, flowers. Nothing, no symbols. Meditation even, but to find the soul. Yes. So it was basically, again, that's why it is a signless place, you know, so that you can go deep within and discover in its nudity. Because at one level, every symbol is a help. But there is a tendency, Shubindu speaks of that in the human cycle, that, you know, men do not understand the spirit of the symbol or the soul of the symbol and they are not able to encash it for the real thing. Yes. So they are lost in the symbol. Yes. And they are symbols are necessary for human beings to progress at a certain point. But they can become effete and even ineffectual. And Shubhinder uses the word, it's like a um, ticketless something, you know, where uh, you, you sit in a train but you don't have the ticket or you, you have the passport but not the visa, something like that. That, you know, if you cannot reproduce the truth of the symbol in your own life, so I think it is the task of each one of us to reproduce that symbol in our life. So with regard to Sri Yoga, I feel the symbol is very simple. At the center should be mother and not the ego. And all around the four powers of the mother working in perfect harmony and unison within this nature. So this nature should be emptied of all the contents of the ego and the distortions due to, you know, desire and all that. And the fourfold power must manifest. And in our outer nature, the twelve powers wherein she says that eight are with respect to the divine and four with respect to the world, how we should deal with the world. And same thing with Auroville, there is a symbol of Auroville. And this symbol basically means that, that every person who believes in the consciousness of human unity should manifest that symbol within. And if one can do it, then he will help in the manifestation of our will. And Matri Mandir, of course, goes beyond all symbols. As she has said, it is the Divine's answer to human aspiration for perfection. Divine's answer. And then you see outside those, uh, you know, it's like a honeycomb, actually, at one level, though they are all yes. round. So you have those, those round uh, interlacing globes made of gold. And they, whenever I see it, um, right from the beginning when I have seen it, it reminded me of an aphorism of Sri where he says, what is God's object in creation? 
He says if each honeycomb, uh, if each uh, cell of a honeycomb could taste all the sweetness of all the other honeycombs, yes. that's why creation is made. So it reminds me of that great honeycomb of Shurabindu, <laughs> where each is perfect <coughs> in itself and the totality, it contributes to the perfection of the totality. Each in itself is perfect. A perfect round which is golden. Yeah. And the total globe is also a perfect round and golden. So you know how beautifully the individual and the collectivity uniquely come together. And outwardly they are manifold. But when you go within, you reach that point, that soundless oratory, the consecrated argent floor, which is the spiritual consciousness. Already by the time you reach there, the consciousness is spiritualized. And then what after spiritualization? Because that is the fiery point. Human being's mm -hmm. aspiration has led him up to a point of psychicization and the spiritualization. What next? So it aspires for the supramental change and the mother interceding twixt the ray and the, the sun, the trembling ray, untrembling ray, interceding between the sun and the earth. Yes. So that is how when one goes there with a spiritualized consciousness, it anticipates a certain amount of development in human consciousness and that's why it's not meant for a curious onlooker and tourist. It is a serious effort and so it is there to find the true consciousness and from that point where the fiery point where all our aspiration has gathered into a single uh, pointing fire, cone of fire, then it calls down the supramental change and the mother becomes the mediatrix between the human aspiration and the change. So Matri Mandir is that point.